today's scripture, Matthew 25, 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for you for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. We're very happy to be here, and thank you so much for receiving us because it's such a privilege to share what God has been doing in our lives and what he has put on our hearts. Um, so I'm Joanna Dufo, and this is Frederick, my husband. We are in the grad school, as you know. Uh, Frederick is in Christian formation and ministry, and I'm in evangelism and leadership. We come from France. Um, we, before we attend, we used to serve in the Alps, and uh, in, a, in a town called Annecy, um, where we did different ministries. Um, uh, our families are not Christian. Um, uh, we used to, to work part-time for the church and to work uh, aside to, to support ourselves, because in France, churches kind of survive. Uh, so Fred was a teacher and I was a speech therapist. So, because the, the situation in France for the Christians is quite poor. Um, people are, have a Catholic background, but many of, of these Catholic roots people ha are atheists now. And um, so there is few Catholics who, who, who believe there, is a, there has been a, a revival in, in the Catholicism. And for the Protestant side, evangelicals are the most maybe lively but we are 0.7% of the whole population of France. So it's very few. And the people are very close to spiritual conversations. So, <coughs> so after our graduation, hopefully, we, um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we plan to go back to France and we have a, a team of five uh, couples and we plan to do church planting there and we have uh, on our heart to open uh, vocational ministries for unbelievers and believers and, and some other things that we, we have on our heart. But the, the main point is that we, we want to help people find in God what they are made for and leave it out uh, in, the, in, the, in their context. And, uh, but we, we realize that if we want to lead uh, other people um, in this way, we, we have to be in this way ourselves. And that we want to, to share uh, with you thi this morning, what God has begun to do in our life that we can uh, go and find our vocation. Um. 
So in early 2009, um, we started to, to, to receive from God that, uh, like, it, God talked to us during two weeks every day about one special topic, and then it lasted for two months very regularly. Uh, at first, it started with hearing about the persecuted Christians in India. There had been a slaughter of Christians, more than 3,000 Christians um, persecuted and killed in Orissa. And we thought, wow, they are our family. And, uh, and we heard that there, are, there is more Christian persecuted today than the whole history. And then we heard sermons about slavery and children in, in, that are forced to work or in, in sex sla slavery and human trafficking. And today there are 27 million slaves. It's even more than at the abolition of the slavery. Uh, the, the, the human traffic industry um, gains more money than e or uh, equally than weapons and drugs industry now. 50% of, of the slaves are children and the rest are women or vulnerable people. Uh, Gary Ogan, the president of the International Justice Mission, wrote a book called Just Courage, and it really touched us too. And then God talked to us through, through um, Bible verses. So Isaiah 58, um, where he says to, to his people, I'm not interested for you to be religious if you don't care for the needy and if you don't feed the, the hungry and if you seek your own pleasure. And then um, Matthew 25 that we heard, where we see that we will even be judged on, upon this criteria. What have we done about, about that? So now we're going to hear Isaiah 58. Sorry, Eric. Isaiah 58, shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the command of its gods. They ask me for just decisions, and they seem eager for God to come near to them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them? and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, here am I, if you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, 
then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Thank you, Eric. When we, when we heard that, <clears throat> and when we uh, um, saw the contemporary faces of the oppressed, we were uh, quite excited uh, because we could see what we um, have to do. But at the same time, uh, we feel disconnected. We, we, we feel disconnected inside because what we believe, what we feel, and what we do don't go together. And we feel disconnected with God because what he values the, the most were like uh, kind of um, weird for us. And, and we were disconnected with people be because we, uh, of our indifference. And so we, we realized that we, we, ha we had t t tolerated for so many years, uh, accepted that our, our soul can stay dry. And, and we weren't satisfied in God. And, and we realized that we couldn't love our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and strength. We couldn't. And so uh, we, the, the, the turning point was to realize that in history, many Christians had the same goal, love God and love others. But they had um, a richer way to be with God. And so we rediscover the spiritual practices like con contemplation or silence and so solitude, um, meditation and some others. And, and God renewed us uh, little by little. And, and we began to feel uh, more alive. And so when we realized when we realize that God <coughs> called us to a life of courage, of faith, and of meaning, instead of um, safety, success, and comfort, we, we take all the courage we had, and we, uh, we began a little thing. So we just uh, walked in obedience, and we started with the people in the street. So we found some gypsies and uh, we cared for them. We invited them to lunch at the church. And so people in the church were excited about that and, and touched and so they gave clothes and our trunk was full of clothes during months. And uh, even a family took their children at Christmas and they, they asked their children if they would be willing to give some of their toys to these uh, children of the street. And, um, um, there was a, another church who who would do a ministry with with the homeless people. So our church just helped these these other church, and we didn't used to work really much together. Like one is Pentecostal, so and and the other not, you know. And but we just unified in this ministry. We tried with Open Doors, which is a, a, an organization for persecuted Christian, and we tried to go for a trip, but it didn't work out. So we. We, were, we waited for another opportunity. So we moved from a standpoint of Christian doing activities, from Christian 
witnessing reality and the reality around us, the suffering, the reality of suffering and pain. And this cr created a passion for reality. When you see the truth and, and the reality of life, you want to only see that. And so w as we were exposed to this pain and suffering and reality, we, um, we were um, st struck by our inner reaction. And so we wanted to know, uh, to, to discover our reality. So we began to ask the, the hard question in our lives. And what we found, it's brokenness, it's uh, uh, pain and suffering, but we, we saw face to face our reality. And the turning point w was the power of the gospel itself. We, we realize that it's easy to believe what we don't need, but to when you are face to face to your uh, reality, uh, the gospel is made for, for that. And so we began to invite God in our pain and suffering. And, and we, we began to experience God in, in, in a new way. And we realized that God was doing in us what he, he wanted to do through us and around us. And uh, <clears throat> what, what we wanted to live and die for became more and more clearer. We began to, to be more connected with ourselves and with God and with others. And that dream, dream uh, occurred. And, and the process of, of uh, studying here just uh, happened and, and many other things that Joanna is gonna explain. Uh, we found out that other Christians and like uh, ministers in other towns had the same things on their hearts. So we gathered and we created an organization called International Teams France. Um, international teams uh, that what well, we created the, the French branch and so we organized uh, trip, trip missions to just um, help the ministers abroad, abroad saying here are, the, here are our hands and feet uh, what would be the most helpful for you and not coming with like we want to do that you know <laughs> so but we brought some youth from our churches with us and we saw them transformed, and they were renewed in their fa faith, and they would uh, confront some issues in their lives or some family issues. And from egocentrism and selfishness, they, they wanted to help and, and serve. And one was like, I want to be a missionary now and evangelize also in France. And, uh, and when they came back, they renewed the vision for the, in the church for a mission too. So, so then um, uh, God opened every door for us to, to come here and reach and receive a, an education. So, so here we are now, and, and we realize that for the last, the lost and the least, God was willing to, to do all of that. He, 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 he made churches work together. He renewed the face of, of youth. He, he began like, to uh, heal us. He, he, he gave us scholarship to, uh, to study here. But it's not because of us. It's because God is seeing them and he's seeing the church at the same time. And, and we know that the, the solution of God for a broken world is the church. And, and when uh, the church uh, and when us we, we, we began to value what, what was dear to the heart of God. God gave us like a blank check. He said, okay, what do you want? And we wonder if, if, uh, if it can be part of, of, of lots of story, beginning to value what God is valuing because God is, is, he, God is ready to open the gate of heaven for, for, for them. So Joanna, uh, at, at that time, when, when we received so many 
uh, information. She, she, she wrote a song based on Isaiah 58. And this song just express uh, the heart of God for, for justice. Thank you.
please stand up and let me bless you. <clears throat> May your love abound more and more in knowledge and every kind of insight so that you can decide what is best and thus be sincere and blameless for the day of Christ. Feel with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen.